speak. Again, in Galatians 2.5, it says, To whom we gave place by, subject, by subjection. No, not for an hour that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. Again, in Galatians 2.14, But when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter before them all, If thou, being a Jew, livest after the manner of the Gentiles, and not as do the Jews, why compellest thou the Gentiles to live? as do the Jews. And then another verse that I chose was in Colossians 1.5. For the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, where have ye heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel? The big point that I want to make today that I see in the truth of the gospel is it's effectually working in each and every one of us. By these three passages, we can see the centrality of the truth of the gospel. The gospel, or as we heard earlier, is defined as the good message or the good news. It's essential. It is essential in the walk of the child of God. There are no ifs, ands, or buts. It's essential. We must hear the gospel. We must live by the gospel because it is working through us. There is no compromising what the gospel, what the gospel does in a person's life. It effectually works in one's life to transform man from glory to glory. That's what it's doing. And if we look back at these three verses, we can see that continue in the gospel. We see uh, that one might continue in the gospel. Then it talks about according to the truth of the gospel. So these are all, li the gospel's living and working in us as we live and work towards God. But we are being transformed from glory to glory. The truth of the gospel, it is not a mindset of man. It is not a theory or a hypothesis. It is not a better way of life or some kind of higher thinking of man as a philosopher. But it is a reality. The truth of the gospel is a reality. It is of substance, a substance so real that we can lay a hold of it, we can be persuaded by it, and we can confess through it that we are strangers and that we are pilgrims in this present evil world. The truth of the gospel transforms men's lives from a life apart from God to a life where we can boldly, bold, go boldly to the throne of God. It is such a reality that we can boldly say, as John the Baptist, Baptist once said, he must increase while I must decrease. This is a reality, folks. And this is a transforming from the old to the new. This is a new creature. It is not a 12-step program. It is not, like I said, of higher learning. This is a reality of God and God alone. And he produces this through Jesus Christ. Amen. This is a transformation that the gospel is producing in your life. This is the fruit that we are being transformed into the image of the God's dear son. God's love for his son and for man's redemption is spoken to us through the truth of the gospel. The gospel of Christ is the power of God unto salvation. It's, it's being spoken through Christ. It's being worked through Christ. And Christ is working it. And apart from Christ, there is no gospel. Apart from Christ, there is no eternal life. Apart from Christ, there is no acceptance of God. This is the truth and the reality of the gospel. It is in Jesus Christ. During the trial of Jesus, 
Pilate asked Jesus in John 18, 38, what is truth? Well, just prior to that, Jesus tells Pilate what truth is. In John 18, 37, Pilate therefore saith unto him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born. And for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. The truth of the gospel. Christ came, proclaimed God, opened up God, showed us the way to eternal life, showed us the way, purposed our way into the throne room of God. He didn't come to walk this earth and to be a man on this earth. He didn't come to establish his kingdom on this earth. He established his kingdom on high. Amen. Amen. The truth of the reality is that Christ came to this earth to die. To be made a living or a, to be made a sacrifice for us. Jesus just proclaimed the gospel to Pilate. The good news walked this earth. The good news was a body that was prepared. The good news truly did the perfect will of the Father. The good news declared the Father perfectly. The good news laid down his life, offered up his blood, died, was buried, and was raised up. And now the good news is at the right hand of God, interceding for us, Amen. waiting till his enemies be made his footstool. Amen. This is the truth of the gospel. It's Christ and Christ alone. Jesus Christ is the truth of the gospel. He is the good news. Jesus is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. No man comes to the Father but through him. Amen. That's the gospel. Do we hear Jesus' voice? Do we hear his voice? If we have heard his voice, then we have been persuaded by the truth of the gospel, haven't we? And why is that? Because now we are his children. Now we hear his voice, and he is the good shepherd, and the sheep follow the shepherd. Amen. We know his voice, and we follow him. Jesus is full of grace and truth. Jesus, grace and truth came by Jesus. Mercy and truth have met together in Jesus. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other in Jesus. Truth sprang out of the, heaven, of the earth in the embodiment of Christ Jesus. And righteousness looked down from heaven on Christ Jesus. How serious is sin? The truth of the gospel testifies that it was serious enough for God to send his son to be a sacrifice and to be a made a propitiation for our sin. That's how serious sin was and that's how serious God dealt, dwelt with it. That's the gospel. God came down to the earth in the form of a man in the body of Jesus to bring the gospel to man and to re reconcile man back to himself. This is something that man could not do. We could not do this apart from Christ. We could not do that in our own strength. The law was evidence of that. The law had shown that man could not attain the perfection of the law because of the weakness of the flesh. But the gospel proclaims that through Jesus Christ, we can attain perfection. We can gain acceptance to God and we can have eternal life with the Father. That's what the gospel proclaims. No man could answer the call, but yet God's hand was not too short. There was a body that was prepared, and it was God's own arm that brought salvation to man. And it is through the truth of the gospel that this is proclaimed. 
Every promise and every word that God has ever proclaimed, every purpose, every jot and tittle, everything that God has ever done is in Christ Jesus. Yea and amen. The truth of the gospel, as I said before, it effectually works in man to bring man to be a perfect man. To enable man to be meat for the master's use and to enable him to walk worthy of the calling of God. As I said, this is an effectual working in our lives. Just as, as has been brought out earlier today, it doesn't start and then, you and, then you, and then you drop it back because you learned of the gospel, but this is a continual working in you. That's the good news. I want to live with good news all my life. I don't want to hear the good news and leave it back there. I want it to be ahead of me where I'm striving for it. Amen. And that's where the truth of the gospel is. It is ahead of us. Amen. It is in the heavenly realm. It is our hope. And I'm getting ahead of myself again. But it truly is. But now we are meat for the master's use. We've been sanctified. Yeah. In 1 Thessalonians 2.12 it says, that ye walk worthy, that ye, that's, that's something that I cannot fathom, that we are able to walk worthy in front, a, in a, a holy God. In a holy God. We are able to do this through Christ. That ye are able to walk worthy of God, who hath called you unto his kingdom and glory for this cause. For this cause also we thank God without ceasing, ceasing, because when ye received the word of God which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. Amen. Now we're getting into another point. You have to believe the gospel. You have to believe in the truth of the gospel for it to be effectually working in your life. When we hear the gospel, our faith, here comes faith. Our faith was, has enabled us to receive the word of God with all confidence in knowing that, that it is of God and that we know and we have heard his voice. Faith has got to be, take us to this point where we can see it, where we can lay hold of it, where we can take it and make it be a part of ourselves Amen. in order for it to be walk, working effectually through us. When we receive the word of man, we hold it up to the word of God, don't we? We have got to. We've got to hold the word of man up to God, up to the word of God. Because why? Because the word of God is what? It's truth. Amen. It's truth. It came from God and God himself. So we take man's word and hold it up to the word of God. We try the spirits to see, to see if they are of God. But when we do hear and we do see the word of God, then we will know and we will believe. And when we believe, then the gospel will be effectually, will be effectual in changing us again into the image of his dear son. Yeah. Got to hear, you got to believe and for it to be working for us. Where and also this gospel, this truth, it brings us hope. In Colossians 1.5 it says, For the hope which is laid up. See, this hope's laid up. This hope's ahead of us. If we have it, then why do we hope for it? We do have the first fruits of the kingdom now. Yes, we do. We have the first fruit tastes of it. But when it's going to be revealed to us in that day, the half has not yet been told. For the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, where have ye heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel? See, this hope is in the gospel also. It's working in us, and now the hope that is ahead of us is in the gospel. The gospel's 
way too big, way too big for even three days of speaking about it. But the truth of the gospel, which came unto you as in all of the world and bringeth forth fruit as it doth also in you since the day ye heard of it and knew the grace of God in truth. See, it didn't stop. Gospel, the gospel did not stop when we first heard it. But it's working in us as it worked in us on the day we heard of it. The truth of the gospel reveals that our hope is, a, is, is, is as an anchor. Our hope is an anchor in the heavenly realm, which is anchored in Christ Jesus himself. It is our hope for the time to come. Think about it. If you got your anchor on the end of your rope or your chain or whatever it is, the anchor's not there, but you're pulling it, and it's drawing you closer as it is shoring you to that rock or to that thing. So your anchor is working to stay to you, to stabilize you, but it's also working to draw you in. It is our hope for the time to come. We are established, we are made sure, and we are connected by our hope in him. Apart from Christ, we can do nothing. Apart from Christ, there is no life. Apart from Christ, there is peace with God. There is no peace with God. There's no covering for our sin. There's no power. There's no hope. There's no rest. Apart from Christ, there is no acceptance, nor is there eternal life. We need Christ for our peace. We need Christ for our eternal life. We need Christ, just like Brother Bob brought out, we need to breathe Christ in more than our oxygen. Christ is the epitome of God, and the truth of the gospel declares it. Through the gospel, we shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Amen. The truth shall make you free. The gospel, it has been spoken. It has been spoken to all of mankind. It's gone, through, it's gone out throughout all of the world, hasn't it? But in order for it to be effectual, again, it's got to be mixed with faith. It's got to be, be, be believed in. In Hebrews 4, 2, oh, did we realize the gospel was preached back then? The gospel was preached to Abraham, wasn't it? But this was all a foretaste. This was all a shadow of, of the one to come, of the one that was going to bring the gospel. But in Hebrews 4, 2, it says, For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Not all men have faith, do they? Not all men believe in the gospel, do they? Because a prince of this world hath blinded the minds of them that believe not. Without faith, it is, it is impossible to believe him. Without faith, you cannot and you won't or you will not want to hear the word of God. You don't want no part of it without faith. Faith is the catalyst in which the gospel works. The gospel is the conduit. And our faith is that which enables us to be effectual, enables it to be effectual in our lives. Apart from, apart from one another, apart from faith and the gospel, they cannot work. The gospel must be mixed with faith, lest we also fall in the wilderness. That was the repercussion, wasn't it? For the gospel not being mixed with faith, that generation fell, minus two. Remember, that whole generation, Caleb and Joshua heard and saw the same things as that first generation. But what separated them? Their faith. We are well able. Amen. Caleb said, we are well able. Yes. Why? He had faith in what God had said. Yes. And you know, I can stand up here and declare plainly also that I am well able. Why? Because the gospel was preached, I believed, and I believe the promises of God. Amen. 
The truth of the gospel, the reality of it makes us not ashamed. The more you believe in some, the more not ashamed you're going to be. Amen. Makes us not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. In fact, this is how we live. We live every day of our lives not being ashamed, being confident in God. That he is working his purposes and his will through our life. It is, the, it is as the just lives by faith. It is the power of God unto salvation. And it is revealed to us from faith to faith. Faith, the gospel, faith, the God, they are one. They are working as one. The more clearly our faith reveals these truths to us, the more boldly we can say, here I am, send me. That's not being ashamed. We know the story of Isaiah in Isaiah 6. He knew that he was a man of unclean lips. He lived in, in, in a generation amongst men of unclean lips. He saw the high and lofty one. It took God sending that angel with a live coal to touch his lips. And then what happens? Here am I, send me. He is not ashamed. He is not ashamed. And when we hear the gospel and we're sanctified and justified and we are brought into the, into the body of Christ, we are not ashamed either. Because we know that greater is he that is in, in us than he that is in the world. And we know that if God be for us, who can be against us? This is the gospel. This is the good news that God has given us through Christ. So the more clearly our faith reveals these truths, the more boldly we can say that, here I am, send me. We live by the truth. We are moved by the truth. And it truly does transform us. It is effectually working through our lives. This is the truth of the gospel. Ephesians 1.12 tells us that we should be to the praise. Oh, think about that. That God, that, that we are to be his praise. Of his glory. We are the praise of God's glory. Who first trusted in Christ. In whom ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption by the, of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. He raises us up to sit together in high places. This is not a lowly, lowly state, brethren. And we know that it is not because of us and ourselves that we are raised up. But we are raised up in Christ. We must not compromise the truth of the gospel. We must deem it precious enough to protect it deep within our hearts. We must allow the Holy Spirit to work within us, comparing spiritual with spiritual. We cannot be lax in this. We cannot be lax in this. We've got to hold on to it tight. Galatians 2.4 tells us, and that because of false brethren, unawares, brought in, who came in privily to spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage. To whom we gave place by subjection, no, not for an hour, that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. Amen. Do you see how precious? Yeah. Do you see how precious they deemed the gospel? They held it tight within their heart. And they did not give them false brethren, not an hour. So why? For why? Because so that they can continue. Continue in the truth. We've got to hold it precious. We've got to protect it. Because they got wolves out there. They got wolves out there in cheap clothing. We've all experienced them. They're trying to, they're trying to, Take us from the liberty that we have in Christ. Give no place for the leaven in your hearts, brethren. This leaven, it'll grow as a cancer, won't it? It'll eat all the good stuff, and it'll kill you. 
always try the spirits, always be as the Bereans, and receive the word with readiness of mind, searching the scriptures daily to see if those things which you have heard are so. You must allow the Holy Ghost to work in you for the truth of the gospel to be effectual. You quench not the spirit, you despise not prophesyings, prove all things, and hold fast to that which is good, and, and the peace of God will sanctify you wholly. Do you see that progression? Precious, 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 so that, the, so, that, so, that, so that the peace of God will sanctify you wholly. You've got to hold it deep within our hearts. And in closing, let us remember that Jesus is the way. Amen. That he is the truth. And that Jesus is the life. Amen. That Jesus is the source of the truth of the gospel. Our faith must bring us to the incorruptible reality that all that God has for man is in Christ Jesus. And that this, this is the true and this is the perfect good message of God. This is my well-beloved son. Hear ye him. Why? Because he has the truth of the gospel. That if the son makes you free, then you are free indeed. That God had called, has called us by his gospel in the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. And he has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Amen. We can read in, in, in one of the, the epistles of John that they, I think it was John, but they, they, they saw him, they handled him. And we can do just the same through our faith. We can hear Christ. We can handle Christ. The truth of the gospel has an effectual working on those who believe. It will, it will produce fruit in those who will hear. That the truth of the gospel will enable men to walk worthy of the vocation of God and that God will work his good will and his good purposes in man through the gospel. The good message of God is in the face of Jesus Christ and that he has raised us up to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. What more of the truth of the gospel is that it's in the face of Christ Jesus and let me leave us with one last verse it's in James 117 every good and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the father of lights with whom there is no variableness neither shadow of turning of his own will begat he us with the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Amen. Thank you.